Today, we're going to be connecting the VGC radio to Linux. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick, before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back, guys. Jason, KM4ACK. In one of my last videos, I told you that I was having trouble connecting this radio to Linux and using it for Yak. Well, since that video came out, I have went ahead and tried to update the firmware again. Now, I'm not sure if I really got a new beta firmware version or not, but what I do know is when I went back and tried to connect this to Linux again, not only only did I get a successful connection to Linux, but I also got a successful connection to Yak. Let's go ahead and jump over to the laptop and let me show you guys exactly how I made this happen. All right, so as you can see, I've got things coming in here on the map. I've got my station right here, a Digipeter right here, and this object that my Digipeter puts out uh, right here on the map. You'll also see that the radio is uh, receiving things and transmitting back and forth if you're paying attention. Now, let's go ahead and try a beacon here from inside of Yak and we should be able to watch the radio transmit as well. So let's go ahead and click on that beacon button now. And there we go. We see the radio go in to transmit. So everything is fully functional right here inside of Yak. All right, so the first thing we need to do to get this radio to pair up is go into the menu system here. Let's come down to, uh, I believe it's just pairing on the radio. And we're going to click the green right here on the radio, the green button, and you'll see a check mark come in beside pairing. Now, on the Linux box, what we need to do next is we need to run this command here, HCI tool space scan. Let's go ahead and run that, and that should give us a MAC address for the radio, and it should give us the radio name and you'll see both of those returned right here on the screen. Now, in order to pair this with a radio, we've got this set here. I'm going to go over to another terminal window, and actually I'm going to copy this command right here. That way, oh, that way I can just paste it in on the next screen. Let's go ahead and open that second terminal window, and then we're going to enter this command here. That's sudo space rf com space connect space forward slash dev forward slash rf com zero. Now you can use basically any rf com number that you want here. So if you wanted to use rf com one or rf com two instead of the zero, that would be fine. The next thing I have pasted out there is the MAC address that we copied from this screen right here. I pasted that in, and then I gave it a space and a one. That one out there tells it which channel of the Bluetooth connection we want to use. Uh, and in this case, I have found that using one seems to work at least most of the time. Let's go ahead and press return right there. It's going to ask me for my pseudo password, and let's see if it will connect. All right, now, this is the problem that I've run into with this radio. Uh, this connection point can be a little bit flaky. So the first thing I would do is try to turn the radio off and back on, which I'm going to do now. And we'll see if that clears up this issue. If not, we may have to uh, reboot the computer as well. Let's go ahead and try running that same command one more time here. And let's see if that will give us a connection. And indeed, just rebooting the radio in this case gave us a good connection. So now we can go ahead and open up Yak and get ready to create the port that is going to talk to that. Now, it's going to ask me if I need help configuring Yak if you don't have anything configured already. I'm going to say no right there. And we're just going to come up to the file menu at the very top, come down to configure, and we're going to say expert mode. Once this dialog box pops up, let's come over to ports, and then let's come right down here to where it says add a port. 
For the port type, we're going to leave it set to the default, which is Serial TNC. And under device name, we should see that RFCOM0 that we created just a second ago. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to leave our baud rate at 9600 and go ahead and give your call sign right here in this box. Now, if you just want to receive, you can probably quit right here. I want to be able to transmit as well through the radio. So I'm going to change this transmit right here from disabled to enabled. And that should give us everything we need. Now, I have ran into some errors right here as well. But let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens. And it looks like we have successfully connected to the Serial TNC. Now, on this particular box right here, let me open that back up by choosing Edit. If you click Save right here and it throws an error, you may need to try to start back over from scratch by... Uh, killing the connection that we built a while ago in the terminal window, that's this connection right here. Uh, and you may need to reboot the computer and reboot the radio. So literally starting from scratch again. But hopefully you won't run into that. I have ran into it a few times though to where I had to just reboot everything in order to get this to work. Hey, Editor Jason here. I realized that I didn't mention something during the filming of the video. I had already configured my beacon for Yak. So you would not be able to hit the beacon button unless you have this tab configured. And you'll notice that I've got a check mark right there by enable station beacon. And then I am not using GPS in this particular case, but I did go ahead and plug in a latitude and longitude. So be sure that you configure this particular screen here or otherwise you won't be able to send out a beacon. Now, if we go ahead and push that beacon button again, we should see the radio go into transmit. And in fact, it did go into transmit mode. Now, APRS is not real busy right now in my area, so it might take uh, a few minutes to get everything to show up on the map, but everything should be working as we expect it at this point. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.